leave it as the last, the last thing I can possibly do to give myself another chance. Hi everyone, Kara Santa Maria here, and that's Kim Swozy. I couldn't interview her personally because earlier this year, at only 23, she passed away from brain cancer. She chose to be cryonically preserved, a scientifically controversial method of freezing the body or the head in hopes of resuscitating later. To learn more about the process, I reached out to David Ettinger, a member of the Cryonics Institute, a nonprofit organization founded in 1976 by his father, Robert Ettinger who also happens to be frozen there. The Cryonics Institute houses about 115 frozen bodies currently, and David estimates that a few hundred people are in cryonic preservation at other facilities around the world. I asked him, what is cryonics? Uh, cryonics specifically refers to uh, freezing people uh, at death in order hopefully to preserve them and revive them when medical technology has made that possible. As of right now, medical technology has not made that possible. Apparently, you can be frozen immediately after death, but you're left in a suspended state indefinitely. So isn't this just wishful thinking? I asked David how he responds to the assertion that all this is pseudoscience. Well, I mean, Cranix is based on a bet about the future, that technology will advance, a bet that we think is very sound, but it is evidence-based. It's not, some people say, well, do you have faith in Cranix? No, I just look at history and think this is a good bet. It's not certain by any means, but it's the best alternative. And that's how my father approached things. I mean, he's re he wrote some articles about probability theory and what he called the probability of rescue. So Cranix was always from the first scientifically based. And though there were people from time to time who said, this isn't going to happen, my father would always challenge him and say, what's your evidence? But of course, it's easy to play devil's advocate here and say, what's your evidence that it is going to happen? Cryonics, or low temperature science, and specifically cryobiology, is still at a stage where freezing whole organisms cannot be done without damage to their tissues. Is the damage so limited that you could freeze and revive a person today? Uh, it is not. I mean, there's too much damage that we cannot uh, reverse currently for that. But that's part of um, why you need more time, but people frozen have the time. My father said that. Some people will not be satisfied until someone is frozen and revived and lives forever. Well, we can't wait for them. And if you don't want to wait, you can be frozen too for anywhere from $28,000 to upwards of $200,000. But then, how is your body actually preserved? What's the science behind cryonics? The quicker you do it, the less damage will occur. And the process begins with the cooling of the, the body and especially the head. Uh, sometimes while continuing to pump the blood so that oxygenated blood flows to the brain and that limits um, the damage in the meantime. The next step is the cooling goes through several steps, starting with ice. Then the uh, body is perfused with uh, cryoprotective agents to protect against damage and freezing. You know, the next stage is dry ice and then liquid nitrogen vapors and ultimately liquid nitrogen. And the entire process uh, takes a couple of days, it takes a few days really. David told me that this process of freezing is called vitrification. That word literally means transforming a substance into a glass. Through the use of cryoprotective agents, the ultimate goal is to minimize or eliminate the amount of crystals that form when water freezes. And nearly 60% of the human body is made of water, so this is a significant hurdle. Reasonable advocates of cryonic research and development know that there's no guarantee that technology will ever allow them a chance at immortality, but they're hopeful. The options are either I die and nothing happens, likely, um, or I come back and things are weird, probably, but I mean, I'm, I'm alive again. There's plenty of legitimate research that goes into the study and practice of cryonics, but does the end result have a scientific footing? Think you'll want to be frozen when you die for hopes that you may one day live forever? Are you ready to take that bet? Come on, talk nerdy to me.